Hey, it's me, Katie. So how early is too early to start planning for your move? Before I begin, I just want to remind you to like and subscribe to this channel. I've got a lot of great information that I put out every single week, all the time, to help you understand the real estate market. Okay, so let's talk about how early is too early for you to plan your move. Some people think, oh, it's gonna take me a year, it's gonna take me six months, it's gonna take me five years. What is really the right answer? So I want you to think about your real estate move as kind of like doing a puzzle. Let's pretend it's a really, really complicated puzzle, and you're trying to fit all of the pieces together, but you don't have the picture of what the puzzle is supposed to be. It's very hard to complete that puzzle if you do not know the full picture of where you're going and what you're doing. So that's kind of what you need to think about as you start to plan for buying or selling a new home. So I really think it's never too early to start figuring out what you're going to do next, your next transition in life as far as your home, whether it be six months or six years. So the first thing we're going to talk about is you need to understand and where you're going in the market. What are you looking for? And I've had a lot of situations where sellers call me and they say, I'm ready to sell. We want to go and find a bigger house. Maybe we want to downsize. And so we get in there, I'm doing a listing appointment. And then I say, okay, well now where are you going to go? And they don't know. They haven't started looking yet. And then what will happen is they start looking and they realize there is nothing out there for them that they like. I actually did have this situation with somebody who is still currently looking. And I did go in, did a market evaluation for them and what they actually were looking for in their home in their next phase was actually going to be really, really hard to find. So I knew we were going to be a couple of years out trying to be able to help them find that place to go. So you need to keep in mind that if you do not know exactly where you're going to go, it's very, very risky to put your house on the market because you may be out of a home. So what that basically means is you need to start having listings sent to you early, early enough that you can start to understand the market and you can see what kind of homes are for sale and what kind of homes have been sold and how much they've been sold. You don't want to go into this blind and it does take some time. It does take some research, especially if you don't know the area that you want to be in. I would say at least six months before you think about buying a new home, you want to be set up on searches. You want to see what the homes look like from the pictures. You want to see what those price points are. You want to then see what those homes actually sell for. So you can understand that when it's time for you to do your search, you will already know, kind of have this background a little bit. You also need to be looking at what is your buying pattern power, meaning your interest rates. What does your credit look like? What is your buying power? You may think, oh, we can afford a $500,000 home. Yeah, but until you actually dig in with a lender and you understand what those payments look like, what those interest rates look like, are you dependent upon interest rates going down? And what happens if your interest rates go up? And I will tell you, I did have a situation with a new construction home that we had buyers who wrote an offer early, early 2022, and the interest rates were very low. And then as they built the house that wasn't going to be ready until 23, we all know what happens. The interest rates skyrocketed. So when they originally wrote the contract at about a 3% rate, when they actually went to close on the house, we were more like six or seven. Could they actually afford that home? They didn't think about that before they wrote that contract is what if rates go up? So now we are all in this situation right now where rates have gone up. I just want you to start thinking about that. What is your actual buying power if interest rates go up or they go down? The other thing when you're looking for a house so you know where to go is what happens if you can't find that type of house that you're looking for? Do you have other options? Are you thinking maybe you might rent? Are you going to move out of state? Are you going to move to another city? What is going to happen? So that's why it is so significant that you start looking at the houses that are available for where you're going to move when you actually sell your home. I know people are like, well, why would you look for homes on where you're going to move first? Because you have to know where you're going to go. Because the worst thing is that if you actually go and sell your home, you might be homeless. Now, when it comes to selling your home, you really want to understand what the market looks like the same way the buyers are. But here's the thing that you can do that's a little bit different. Get yourself set up on a search for homes that have sold and closed and are active on the market right in your tight little area. What you really need to do is get a search set for all the homes that are on the market or sold right in your tight little area. And this can be done the moment you move into your home because you want to know, is your market going up? Is it going 
buying down. You know, your real estate is probably one of the biggest assets that you own, so it's important that you understand exactly where your price is on your house throughout the years. So now as you see all these homes coming and going on the market, what are they sold for? How do they look on the inside? You can start to understand how much your home is actually going to be worth, and you can also look and see what condition does your home have to be in. So I have something that I call the stress price paradox, and what that really is, the higher price you want, the higher stress you're going to have. If your goal is to have a higher price, most likely you are going to have higher stress. If it is really important to you to keep your stress to a minimum, maybe it's a parent's home that you're selling, something like that, you don't necessarily need the money. If you want to have lower stress, most likely you're going to be lower on the price. Is it important for you to have the highest price because you're going to have the highest stress? If it's important for you to have the lowest stress, then you're probably going to have a lower price. And the reason that is, is because in order to get the highest price, your home has to be in the best condition. And in order for it to be in the best condition, you are going to have to get it ready. You're going to have to spend money. It could be a long time for you to get it ready. It might be a short time for you to get it ready. But in order to get the highest price, your home has to be in the best condition. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you do know that I do not recommend just throwing money into a house and updating it. Please, please don't do that. You can go back and watch my other videos about what to update because I don't want you to stress about that. The idea is that if you are looking for the highest price, at some point in the market, you need to make sure that you have no deferred maintenance in your house. You are not gonna get the highest price on your house if all of the windows in your home need to be changed out. If you need all of those windows replaced, you're not gonna get the highest price. However, replacing windows is a major expense. So if you're looking at moving five to 10 years from now and you know your windows are bad, that might be an expense that you want to budget for early in the process because you don't wanna wait until until it's time to go on the market and then you're spending $50,000 on new windows. Remember, if you want the highest price for your house, this is what you're gonna have to do. Don't do it all at the same time, but you're going to need to plan. It's like the puzzle that I talked about. You have to know what the picture is at the end goal in order for you to complete the puzzle. So there are a lot of factors that come into play when you go to buy or sell a home. My biggest recommendation is you start your education process early. And that means really engaging with a real estate agent agent early, early on. You know, don't look at your agent as just an agent or a salesperson. If you're working with somebody knowledgeable, they're going to be your consultant. And that's what we are. We really do try to provide that consultant flavor to our clients. We want to give them the best information so they can make the best decisions. So now, even if you're five years away from moving, it's really important that you engage with a real estate agent early, early on so that you can talk about these things because that agent is going to tell you, gosh, you know what? If you're looking to move in five years, I highly suggest that you put in the money to replace those windows. Or, and I've talked to people about this before, if their kitchen is not updated and they're not planning on moving for five to 10 years, why not do it now so that you can live with it rather than doing it later right before you go to sell? And the reason why is you want to enjoy it, right? You want to enjoy the updates that you make. So as always, reach out to me if you have a question. Like and subscribe to this channel. I talk about real estate all the time. No topics too big, no topics too small. Let me know if you have any great ideas, like and subscribe down below. And as always, if you know, you know.